AMD looks set to dominate the next big GPU tech that changes everything for gaming. But before I get to that, AMD's monster APU is coming to desktop, Nvidia is releasing the D, and AMD's secret GPU has been found. Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. First up for today, AMD's monster APUs, their Strix Halo-based Ryzen AI Max, are finally coming to desktop, sort of. As you can see right down here, a company is actually releasing a mini ITX motherboard that supports the FP11 socket. You can see it says that this comes with a single APU of undisclosed specs, so presumably this board will support all Halo SKUs up to 16 Zen 5 cores. It goes on to state that the board also comes with pre-installed LPDDR5X memory. So that of course means soldered on memory, meaning this isn't AMD making these chips available in AM5 form with support for DDR5 memory or anything like that, which is almost certainly impossible anyway because they're too big, but instead a company is making a board that adds support for their new socket. So you can build a PC around it. Sort of like what AMD did with their motherboards equipped with PlayStation or Xbox SoC a little while back. Either way, this really is cool. So you can see when it comes to LPDDR5X memory, it supports up to 128 gigabytes of memory. Then it goes on to state that the board features two M.2 2280 PCI Express 4.0 times four slots and plenty of connectors, including USB 3.2 DisplayPort, HDMI, and even standard F-Panel headers if users want to install it in a normal case. It goes on to state, and this is the name of the board, it says STHT1 is a truly thin mini ITX board with 17 by 17 centimeter dimensions and support for standard ITX cases. Judging from the render, the board should also support standard CPU coolers. And that, of course, is great news. All of that's pretty interesting, but do keep in mind that as they state, the board also lacks USB 4 gigabit plus Ethernet or even a simple SATA connector. So, yeah, as it states, there aren't any of those. Still, though, like I said, this is pretty awesome. Now, this is almost certainly not going to be a great purchase for gamers' price to performance. It's more made likely for AI and things like that. Yeah, it will be a great gaming board, but given the price of all of this, it will almost certainly not be worth it. You'd be way better off buying a discrete GPU, which, of course, Discrete GPUs have pretty much always been better price to performance. Still though, this will be really cool to kind of see it come together. And I just know it's something that's really interesting to me as well as other PC enthusiasts like I know many of you are. But first, I've got to stop you from making a terrible mistake, specifically going out and spending a ton of money on a new GPU. Instead, save your money by visiting today's sponsor, Jawa the online marketplace I recommend for your next GPU purchase. Simply put, it was built by gamers for gamers. And thanks to that, you can find awesome deals on all your favorite PC hardware. Whether it's GPUs, CPUs, motherboards, memory, you name it, Jawa has it at a great price. Like this Ryzen 9 3900 XT for just 120 bucks, or this 240 millimeter Lee and Lee AIO for just $40. They've got tons of deals just like this. And if you want to save even more money, you can trade in your old CPU or GPU right to Jawa to help offset that price. To top it off, if you're not interested in building your own PC from scratch, there are tons of boutique pre-built sellers that make some awesome builds. So they've got something for everyone, and it's all at a great price. So don't wait any longer and head over to the link in the description below to start saving on your parts today. And next up for today, to D or not to D? That is the question, as Nvidia took the 5090D off store shelves to comply with new US regulations for China. We originally heard about a new double D GPU, but Nvidia apparently <laughs> isn't a fan of double Ds, so they changed it to the V2 chip. But then we were hearing that it may not come out either. Well, it looks like it is in fact coming. As you can see right here, it says, according to X Preview and Benchlife, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090D V2 is finally coming to China, and AICs have already been notified about the launch date, which is all set for the 12th of August. Now, to kind of remind you about what this GPU does differently, so 
For one, you can see that it has the same amount of GPU cores as the 5090D as well as the original 5090. We don't really know about core clocks at the moment, but the really big change here is that it goes from 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 all the way down to 24 gigabytes. And this is across a 384 bit bus instead of 512. This makes for a bandwidth of 1.34 terabytes per second instead of 1.79. With that said, it does still come with the same 570 watt TGP. At the end of the day, this is ultimately to get around restrictions that the US has on exporting high end GPUs to China. So we don't really know exactly what the final performance will be, but at least according to this, we won't have to wait long. And next up for today, AMD apparently has a secret GPU that they've been keeping under wraps for years at this point. As you can see, they're calling it the RX 7950 XTX, similar to what they did with the 6900 XT Liquid Edition that they released for the 6000 series. And this gives me some hope for the 9090 XT that we've been hearing about. Either way, as you can see here, it says there were rumors that AMD might do the same for the RX 7000 series and it is possible that an RX 7950 XTX GPU was in development. It says, sadly, there was never any proof that AMD had planned on a Navi 31 GPU that was faster apart from these rumors. Well, as you can see right here from a Korean forum, one user claims that they purchased a prototype that appears to be based on the RX 7000 series. And when we look at it here, it clearly looks like a 7900 XTX, except that it's massive compared to an actual 7900 XTX. Not only that, but you can see that it comes with three 8-pin connectors, so clearly it drew a ton more power. Then we have just some areas where it looks a little bit different. Like, for example, right here, you can see, okay, we've got the Radeon just like the other one, but it, the lighting right here just stops, while on the other one, it goes all the way around. Now, you might think that this is just an engineering model of the 7900 XTX to test everything out, but... Given how just finished it looks, I, I really doubt that. Either way, this of course is an interesting reminder for anyone who claims that certain leaks aren't true, which don't get me wrong, there are leaks that come out that are just completely untrue. But simply put, don't forget that these companies are massive and they are constantly working on new models, things that never end up coming out. So a lot of times some leaks, at least the legitimate ones, can be based on GPUs that just never see the light of day. For whatever reason, AMD decided this wasn't worth releasing. Still, it is pretty interesting to see some of the stuff that they're working on behind the scenes. And lastly for today, I have a huge update to a recent story I covered regarding a new texture compression technology called Neural Texture Compression. In it, I went over the fact that utilizing it, along with Microsoft's cooperative vector, we saw a nearly 90% drop in VRAM requirements for textures, and that could lead to around a 50% drop in overall VRAM requirements in games. At the time, this was specifically NVIDIA's tech, but I mentioned that both AMD and Intel are working on something similar. Well, that same engineer got a chance to try out an RX 9070 XT with this new tech, and it decimates NVIDIA's RTX 5080. As you can see right down here, so like I said, it's the same engineer that was working on this. Now, I will say that they weren't able to use Microsoft's cooperative vectors, but there's actually something similar in Vulkan that AMD supports since 2023. But because of that, they were only able to use DP4A, which is essentially a different path for doing the same thing. It's not as good at it, but it is still neural texture compression. And as you can see here in Vulkan, the 9070 XT got a whopping 1800 FPS, while the 5080 only got 1630 FPS. Now, obviously, this is just a very small, quick scene. That's why you're seeing FPS this high, but obviously you can sort of extrapolate that out into a full game. Then when we have DX12, we're looking at 2,650 FPS versus 1,260 FPS. And this one is wild. So the first one, we're looking at around a 10% increase 
versus the 5080 versus the 9070. The 9070 XT wins by around 10%, but in DX12, it beats NVIDIA by a whopping 110%. Now, they do state that NVIDIA's preview driver for Blackwell is pretty bad, but still, this is sort of NVIDIA's tech. As he states right here, as I observed previously, RDNA 4 is very competitive in AI with software that's properly optimized for them. And the RTX NTC is an adversarial case. It's only optimized for NVIDIA's GPUs, can't even use Vulkan Cooperative Matrix on Radeon at this point. So essentially he's stating this is great news for Radeon users because RTX NTC overperforms in DP4A mode. So all of this means that the next generation tech that is going to be decompressing and compressing textures is looking really, really good for AMD. And given the fact that we really need to use less VRAM, this is a very important tech, meaning that upcoming technologies like this, AMD could be poised to win at, even though, like in this case, it's actually made by and for NVIDIA. So while that does it for today, are you pumped to see this tech start proliferating in games where we finally don't have to use anywhere near as much VRAM? Or are you just bummed that that 7900-7950 XTX GPU wasn't released? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to save money on your PC components with Jawa down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.